Have you been in the market for an intake manifold but weren't exactly sure which to go with? Today we tested three of Skunk 2's most popular offerings for the Honda K-Series platform. Let's check out the data. We start off our test procedures by having a clean, repeatable baseline to work off of. In this case, we have a fully stocked K24A long block. We have an alpha header by Skunk 2. We also have fueling by Dietschworks, which is a 550cc injector with their matching fuel rail as well. The variables that will be changing will be on the intake side. In this case, these three different manifolds and a fourth configuration that will come in at the end. For this test, we're using 93 octane gasoline, nothing exotic, and we are monitoring weather conditions to ensure we have a clean, repeatable test. For run number one, we started with the Skunk 2 Pro Series manifold. This is the closest to OEM that you could get while being in the aftermarket package. Skunk 2 also allows you to have an OEM style bolt pattern with this, and we use their 74 millimeter throttle body that bolts right on with no issues. That first test put us at a baseline of 239.1 horsepower and 195.9 foot-pounds of torque. And this might seem a tad higher than what you're used to on a regular stock K24. It's important to remember that this is an engine dyno and we're looking at crank horsepower where you won't see the typical drivetrain loss that you're used to seeing on a dyno graph with the chassis dyno. From that point forward, we let our engine cool down and we switched over to this second manifold, which is the ultra street style manifold. This one's really cool because it is a two piece design. It allows you to stack spacers if you'd like a little more plenum volume, but you can also still retain that OE style bolt pattern for the throttle body. Since we're able to do that same as the Pro Series, we've went ahead and retrofitted that 74 millimeter throttle body onto this manifold as well to keep that as a constant between these two manifolds. Looking at the dyno graph, we immediately picked up peak horsepower and almost matched peak torque with this swap alone. We made a peak horsepower of 248.5 horsepower and 195.5 foot-pounds of torque. What we find really impressive with this comparison is that there is nearly no loss stepping up to the Ultra Street. Now you will notice that although it made more horsepower, we lost 0.4 foot-pounds of torque by switching to the Ultra Street. Now I wouldn't hyper focus on that number. As you can tell, the rest of the power band almost everywhere has more torque and more power versus the Pro Series. So in my eyes, the Ultra Street is definitely a clear winner versus the Pro Series manifold. Now while the Ultra Street did outperform that, I think there is still a place for the Pro Series manifold and we'll touch on that a little bit later in the video. Now we're moving on to the third of these manifolds, which is the Ultra Race manifold. Now this is what you'd see in an all out race car. It's something that's a very large plenum and a very short runner. We went ahead and bolted this one on and we did expect to see some loss down low and we weren't exactly sure how a stock engine would react at that higher RPM with such a big plenum. Right off the bat, we noticed that at the red line we had set, this ultra race manifold wasn't diving off as hard as the other manifolds were. Because of that, we increased the RPM a little bit to see if it would continue to make power or if it would lose power. At this point, we were doing things in 100 RPM increments and we found that at 8,100 RPMs, the power band starts to flatten out so there was no need to continue to go higher in that RPM. We saw some horsepower and torque loss in the mid range as expected, but to our surprise, the lower RPM range looked very similar to the previous manifolds. This combo made a peak horsepower of 251.7 horsepower and 195 foot-pounds of torque. Now looking at this manifold configuration right here, you'll notice that it is taller than what the video we just showed was. And the reason that is, is because there is a two liter spacer on the plenum. For that, we did a fourth test. We wanted to see what would happen if we added even more air going into the cylinder head.
Now this run in particular made the most peak horsepower, which clocked in at 254.6 horsepower, but less peak torque at only 192.5 foot pounds of torque. If you look closely at the graphs, you'll notice some sections where one combo does better than the other for the ultra race manifolds, but that's not the case for the whole run. Like the last pool, we also increased the red line RPM again, but now to 8200. As you can see at that 8200 RPM range, the power started to decrease, so there was no need to rev it even higher as we had already achieved peak horsepower. Now, what's the main takeaway with all of this? My personal view approaching this test was that with the largest manifold and spacer, we'd see the most loss in power, and with the smallest manifold, we'd see the most increase in torque but that exactly wasn't the case. Being that the peak torque between the Pro Series manifold and the Ultra Street manifold were nearly identical, we looked more towards the horsepower and the power band as a whole. So the Ultra Street does make more peak horsepower and actually does carry a nicer power band throughout low RPM and high RPM over the Pro Series. That's not to say that you wouldn't wanna buy a Pro Series. The Pro Series actually has a really nice space in its own way. If you're looking for an OE style replacement manifold and don't wanna worry about having to buy an additional port as you need to do with the Ultra Series manifold for the coolant and you just want something that you can slap on and it'll fit like OEM, the Pro Series manifold is definitely what you'd like to pick up. Honestly, I kind of think that the Ultra Race is a bit of an overkill for a stock engine. If you have something with higher compression or a head package, perhaps you'd see more of a usable power band, but there is a place where it actually does make more power. So in that 6,700 RPM range and higher, you do see that the Ultra Race starts to shine. And then around 7,300 RPM is where the Ultra Race with the spacer starts to take over on peak power. It's a very small window if you look at it in terms of the full RPM range. And I personally would not recommend that for a stock long block. It has its place in other racing applications, but if I were to reach for one of these three manifolds on a stock K24, I would immediately go for the Ultra Street Series. I think it's important when you're selecting parts that you look at more things than just the peak number. This day and age, people get caught up with the internet and wanting to put up something to say they have the, the best because of X, Y, and Z, or I make the most horsepower for whatever without actually realizing there is a usable power band. And you have to look at that in a lot of your racing situations. If you've enjoyed this type of content and would like to see more like it, please consider supporting us by shopping here at Real Street Performance. We have a full sales staff available to answer any of your questions. And if you're local, you're always welcome to come in and pick up the parts in person. We'd like to hear what you guys would like to see us test next on the engine dyno. We have a lot of big plans for this little K24, so stay tuned. And like always, thanks for watching.